Welcome everyone to episode 3 of the Gran Turismo 3 prize car only challenge. And today we are continuing on with the beginner league events and just kind of trying to continue on. <clears throat> so last time out you guys saw we got two prize cars to add to our garage. And that is the AE86. Which uh, of course is perfectly featured in white. And the another NBLS trim Miata. Uh, which has like a little badge on it that I don't know... What exactly that is. Maybe by the time you guys are um, seeing this, someone's already commented and explained what that badge is to me. But uh, last time out, we took our the one we won from the B license test, the Samariner Blue LS trim, and uh, it's doing pretty good. This thing's actually fairly stout. So I still haven't looked at the price card list of this game and actually plotted out what I should be doing next. I'm torn between doing the Clubman or the FR challenge next because I feel like one of those two would be a good option. Um, I was curious to see if we could do that. Spider Roaster, obviously, we've already done. Um, we could do the NA Cup, which I think would also be a good option. Some of the longer tracks in the game here. Uh, let's see, what about... What's in the FR Challenge? Uh, it's about the same. So I think we're going to do the NA, the NA Sports Race next. Try to get some more prize cars in this video. I'm trying to keep these pretty short and sweet, much like I have been with, like the uh, Pokemon Leaf Green stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, we're try I'm trying to make as much progress as we can in each episode, but trying to keep them around that 30-minute mark just because I, I it got pretty old after a while, and I noticed the longer GT4 Prologue videos got nowhere close to as many views. So <laughs> I'm sure you guys would prefer to have longer videos, but not too long of videos, you know? So let's see what we can do. So our grid, we've got a Vitz RS 1.5, which unfortunately is not pink. We have a A86, we've got a 206 S16, we have a PT Cruiser, and a 328CI BMW. That might be the biggest threat, honestly, is that is that BMW, uh, as it more than likely has the most power here. So, let's see what our little Miata can do. And I've got my wheel ready. Got my settings right on the Thrustmaster app, which uh, does take a little bit extra work. But we are now underway at Apricot Hill. Let's see what we can do. So the BMW, surprisingly, isn't just running away with this right out of the gate. So we're in a pretty good shape. Got that Peugeot. And, of course, the Vitz is somehow running away with the lead at the early point of this race, which I did not expect, as I figured that would probably be one of the slowest cars on the grid. Uh, I know the FF Challenge gives the, the legendary pink Vitz, which I think, obviously, we're going to make use of here. Because the goal is to unlock both vending movies. To me, that's how you truly beat GT3 is to do both ending movies. Now, obviously, some people may say finishing professional league or something like that, but to me, the getting the credits roll constitutes. But for this game, since it has technically two endings, uh, neither of which I've actually... Well, I've seen the first one because I finished arcade mode as a kid. Um, and uh, that obviously grants you ending A, which you get it by completing all the beginner events. Oh, a little bit of a money shift there. It's okay. It's so weird playing this game on a wheel, which I never did as a kid. Um, but I ain't mad. This has actually been a really good experience so far. Once you get the settings right on the wheel, is it as good as playing GT7 on the wheel? Absolutely not. But you get a lot. You get, I would say, about 90%, if not more, maybe like 95% of the feel that you should get from a wheel with this game when you get the settings right. Which for the T300RS, if you are running that wheel specifically, uh, you go to your Thrustmaster control panel app, set your max rotation at 360 degrees, and for the settings tab, I went to the, um, the I think it's called center spring, it's the last thing, and you can do by the game or by the wheel, and I chose to use by the wheel for this, because if you don't, there's no center, there's no real force feedback strength at all. You just kind of turn the wheel and hope for the best. Uh, man, this that corner gets me on controller too. I'm not even gonna be too upset about that mistake. But um, once you do that, I set mine to 70. When I first tested this with the Gran Turismo concept, I used it at 50%, which is the default setting. And I don't mind it. It was just still a little too loose, so I set it to 70 to get a little bit more weight out of the wheel, uh, and it's a little bit faster to snap back to center. Which I think for the majority of us who sim race and other sims it's kind of important to have that kind of fast reaction to get back to center you don't have to 
put as much input into it, overcorrect it, and then, you know, have an unforced error. This thing is skatey. She, she's been a little skatey today. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe I'm just not driving it right. Definitely having to put a little more counter steer into it than I normally do. Ooh, big big slides there. See, do I get force feedback from the curbs? I do. Okay. I didn't think that happened with this. The tail is a little bit happy today. I've noticed that. But hey, right off the gate, we got a race win in the Miata. A good one at that. That's a good race win. Let's see, what was the gap there? No, it wasn't crazy. Four seconds. So, I mean, we're so far not dominating this game like we did with the German lock in the early game. Obviously, in the late game, it got pretty tough. But in terms of, you know, absolutely crushing these races, we're not doing that so far, which has been honestly refreshing. We're fast enough to win, but we're not fast enough to run away by 20, 30 seconds. So that's been a nice change of pace for sure. So we're heading on to Grand Valley next, which is probably going to be the longer of the two races. Um, just because these laps tend to creep into that two-minute mark. Um, especially with this car. So this will probably be the longest of the, the races here. Is it weird that I've always tried to mimic the AI with this? Like, just sitting there. I've always done that for some reason. Alright, so we got the Beetle out here. That thing's probably going to be finishing towards the back. I've noticed a lot of this is starter cars. The Vitz, the uh, the Beetle, the PT Cruiser, the A86. Like, a lot of these are starter cars. Oh, man. We got the MRS shooting around us on the inside there. Let's see if we can regain that place back. Now I just gotta make it stick. I'm trying to remember exactly what variation of this track I have on a Seto. I want to say it's the GT1 and 2 variant of this track. It's not this version of it. Alright, now I should know this sector really well, considering how many attempts it took to get this right on the Miata. I got those revs low. Not what I needed this car. This car is a very rev happy car. Actually, I have a friend who has an NB in real life. I haven't actually seen that car in person because he moved a good bit away from where I live, but he's also got a Mark 7 GTI, so that you know, helps out a lot too for me. <laughs> it seemed to be kind of the go to car for a lot of people that I went to high school with. A lot of us got Mark 7 GTIs after uh, high school. Um, so, just gotta squeeze through the chicane here. My nose is driving me nuts right now. I know it ain't that dusty in here, I just cleaned in here. I spent like an entire afternoon cleaning my room out and dusting it. Alright, we're heading on to the final lap. Two and a half minute lap. That's pretty lengthy for us. It's in the early game. But hey, once we get some faster cars, that won't be quite so bad. When you're driving it right and you're being careful with throttle and put this thing's actually a, a, a treat to drive. Because when you're just hard on the throttle that it kicks the tail out a lot, I've noticed. If you're being smooth with your input and, you know, driving it. <coughs> Ow. <laughs> if you're driving it right, it won't be a pain on you. 
See, smoother at throttle inputs there, and it just immediately kind of grips up. I don't know why I held on to the wheel when I sneezed. That was kind of a dumb idea. That's how you wreck in real life. This thing is really a treat to drive. That was a nasty sneeze, too. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Tail was a little happy there. Thing is wagging like a dog. Alright, we got one more corner to go, and this will be another good old race win for us. You can almost take this flat out. Probably could take it flat out. And, that is another race win. Man. Gnarly sneeze and all. Another 5k in the bank. It's nice though knowing that only like all the credits we're earning is just going towards modifications for the cars. They're not going towards like um, buying a different car, which does suck because that does mean some cars we're not gonna get. Um, but hey, it's nice though because we'll be able to like build up these things relatively quickly. Um, one thing I didn't mention in the first episode, where I was kind of going over how this playthrough was gonna work, I am gonna be using safe scumming. I know a lot of people are probably going to be upset about that, but if I'm going to challenge myself, I'm going to get the cars that I want to run with. Um, most importantly, more than likely, we'll be targeting, like some of them I won't. Like obviously in a normal playthrough, I'll save scum for the, the Vertigo to make some cash quickly. Uh, or for the Camaro race car, or stuff like that. But honestly, like I think um, the only one I'm really going to shoot for is the Arta, the ARTA, Arta Autobax NSX, which if you watched any of my recent Gran Turismo 7 stuff, you'll know that I actually did a live stream driving that car in GT7, and I did a one hour race at Spa, and uh, some good old weather shenanigans got me the race win on that um, by a substantial margin, actually. But uh, that, that was a fun one. But I, I came to really like that car after that. I've always liked the NSX race cars. But I've never... I've always been more of the Supra kind of guy. Uh, the Castro Tom Supra. The Denso Sard in particular. Um, stuff like that I really enjoy. But after driving the, the NSX on GT7, I've come to really like the NSX race car. Probably more so than the Supra. Um, and the Arta Autobax kind of seems to be my go-to choice for that car. All right, come on, we're gonna see if we can dive down the uh, the inside here on the NA Miata here, trying to keep ahead of him. He's he's giving me a run. Oh shoot, man, am I not gonna win this? Why am I struggling? Trying to be a clean driver. Come on, I know I've got the horsepower to get ahead of him. Now I just gotta target this Toyota. It's a shame they never put the 2ZZ in the MR2 or the MRS or whatever your country calls it. I forget this is a six speed. MR, the MR, the Toyota's running off a little bit up there. Let's see if we can reel them in a little bit. Come on, we can reel him in.
Oh, that may screw us up a little bit there. I caught it a little too sharp. And the little thing's finding ways to pull away from me a little bit. Only got a few corners to catch him, so I, I kind of would like to catch him sooner rather than later. Oh, it looks he better go off. Is he better go off? He slowed down. Oh, this is going to be a late battle right here. Played a little safe here. All right, I think we're I think we're gonna be able to make this overtake stick. Maybe not. Oh gosh, that was terrible. Have to play some defense here. I think I've got just enough horsepower. Why is that Toyota keeping up with me so well? 83 thousandths in terms of a gap. I barely got a state ahead of him. That is wild. Was my driving really that bad or was that MR2 like actually quicker than it should have been? Alright, let's see what we got for our first prize car of the day. We got... A Del Sol. Why in the world is a Del Sol the prize car? For oh, that's the NA Cup. That's right. This isn't the FR Challenge. But hey, I mean, I like the Del Sol. I've driven one. They're actually kind of fun. But this being an SIR, too, like this makes it kind of difficult because I kind of want to keep it. Um, make use of it, I guess. I think I might still for the FF Challenge. Because the goal is to eventually do all of these. But I want to see if I can turbo the Del Sol. Milano Red. That's a good looking color on this car, honestly. I think the only, yeah, I say, I think the only wheels I have is the uh, those TEs. Let's go ahead and do the oil change on it. I just kind of want to see. I'm going to do oil change on it just because I want it to be at its fastest. <coughs> Let's see what we can do with it. If we get turbo in, I'm, I'm going to use it for that. Uh, of course not. That's unfortunate. Because this thing would be actually really fun with the turbo stuff. Alright. Let's jump back in our Miata. Let's see. What do I want to take on next? Because uh, obviously there's not really a ton left for us to do here. Um, am I able to use the uh, Del Sol for this? No? Of course not. Um, let's see. We're kind of restricted here. I think, I think literally the only thing we can do left is the Clubman and the FR. So let's go ahead and just jump into the FR challenge. This will be kind of our next stop. All right, let's get into it. We got this. We got uh, three races left for the day. Another long race at Grand Valley, and I think uh, yeah, this is the forward layout again. So we were just here, and now we're back. Pretty similar grid to last time out, too. Is this the 180SX? Because that may actually appear to be a, a bit of a threat. It's a 240, but it looks like a 180 because they didn't want to make a separate model for the USDM car. So, and I think they even still modeled it with, the like, the CA-18, really. Six tenths gap. Oh, I might having no issue running away from that, but that Toyota was giving me so much grief on Apricot Hill a minute ago. Which I think we're going back to at the end of this. And my neck popped again. I wonder if it caught it again, like it did during the uh, GT concept video.
goodness. So it's our gap. It's a two second gap right now between the myself and the S13 there. Coming through the, the S sector here. I like this so much more than the BS they did with uh, this track and GT7. The original layout just completely destroys the new layout. I am sorry for Highway 1 fans. This track, the original, nothing beats the original when it comes to Grand Valley. To me, this is perfection when it comes to this track. Under two second gap now, but I think that last sector was really slow, so I'm gonna blame that. trying to be smooth with the inputs. I want to keep this car facing the right way. I braked a little early. One thing I will say is not having the full 900 degrees of rotation bothers me. That's probably what's taken the most adjustment is that like you get pretty much your full steering so quick. Alright, the last sector here. That was a little bit better. lot better. There we go, another race win. Ah, I'd love to see it. 1.6 second gap to the S13. Not the best gap, but not the worst gap either. I'll take that. That's that's acceptable, I'd say. Ah, shoot, shoot, there we go. The disadvantage with this, and I've, I know I've mentioned it a couple times, is when you use PCSX2 and you have to utilize the GT Force or whatever setting for the wheel, uh, you have to use two controllers because you don't get it. You, your D-pad's useless. So, all right, we're at Special Stage Route 5, two laps here. This is in the past where I've had so many issues with GT3 is on tracks like Special Stage Route 5. Um, but I am using the latest, I think this is the, uh, the nightly release, like the, uh, whichever one, I can't remember which one it is, that's the more development build. Like, I have an update almost every time I launch PCSX2. So it is the latest and greatest version of, the, of, uh, PCSX2. Um, so, it's actually running quite well, though, because on my Steam Deck, even, I have issues with running GT3 at night races. So, I don't know, maybe that's a Steam Deck-related issue. My Steam Deck just doesn't have the raw horsepower. I mean, my desktop is significantly stronger than my Steam Deck. It's not even a fair comparison. Um, I've talked about the, my PC build so many times. And I think it's actually... I think I finally updated the description now. So it should actually show parts that are in my PC. It may not be the case. I don't know for sure. But, um... Yeah, it's a Ryzen 9 5950X. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, well, a 3060 Ti, so... The figure of the Ryzen's the most my my headliner. I think it's, I know it's like a couple gens old now, but 
it still holds its own, and it's a really solid CPU. I probably won't be upgrading that for a long time. I think if I upgrade anything on this thing, it'll probably be the GPU. Um, which I don't necessarily need. Oh, the dive bomb. Okay. Huh. I thought I was going way faster. Uh, let's just put our attacking skills on display here. Steal that position back. Come on. Come on, little Miata. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. <coughs> Heading down in the tunnel here. It was pretty sloppy, but we made it, we made do. This is much better to play on wheel than a controller. Granted, I say about every racing game. If you have the money to afford a wheel setup, do it. Because it is honestly the best way to play a racing game. Eventually I may go Fanatec, but I honestly love my Thrustmaster wheel. Thing is though, since I play predominantly on PS5 with Gran Turismo 7, I have to get the, what is it, the CSL DD? I think it's called. Well, I'm not saying I love my Thrustmaster enough where I don't necessarily know if and when I'll do that switch to, to direct drive. Because this wheel doesn't break my hands. And I type for a living, so I kind of need my hands. And there we go. Another race win. All right. I know I said I try to keep these on 30 minutes, but with one race left in this championship, we might as well go ahead and do it. Like, I'd be lame not to. So let's go ahead and wrap this one up. We'll do uh, this last race at Apricot Hill here. Alright, let's see what we can do here. See what our grid is. I, I would not be surprised to see the S13 again. Yep. SLK-230 compressor in this time as well. So this Miata sounds straight out of Gran Turismo 2. Now we are racing. I think that's an NA Miata ahead of us. Yep, definitely NA. Oh, come on. That was a little dirty. Sorry, Mercedes. Looks like you're bumping everybody, huh? Fire out of this corner fast enough to run away a little bit. Looks like we did. I'm sorry for the lack of comments here. I'm locked in. Try not to make the same errors that I made last time out uh, with the uh, NA Cup. Come on, grip up. All 
are entering the final lap here. 1.3 second gap to the, the S13 there. Oh, I injured way too wide. I probably could have held a lot more speed and I've been able to cut that line in a little bit. Coming down into the hairpin. And we are out. Let's go. All right, much less eventful this time around than last time out. Much less eventful. And that is another race win. I don't. Th I think this car has been completely undefeated so far, which has been nice. Not having to redo these races in the early game. And sure, the competition is definitely getting faster. Um, but hey, I mean, we're, we're making good progress. We got almost 30K in the bank. All right, what's our prize car here? This looks like a Skyline. It's an S13, okay, it's a Sylvia. That actually might become rather useful because that's actually a really good car to have at this point in the game. Um, the question is, is it an SR20 or is it a CA18 car? It is a CA18. Yep, 172 horsepower, but this should be turbo, so. CA13 is a really solid engine. I actually am excited to use this car because this is a car I haven't really given the time of day. And I think this would qualify maybe for 80s sports car as well. Let's see. So I think we finally have a car we can get out of the Miata for. I don't know for sure if this will qualify for 80s sports car. It does. Nice. I didn't think it would because this car, I thought the S13 was a 90s thing. But anyway wrap things up here thank you all so much for watching this has been a really fun episode we got some really cool cars and we finally have a car to jump out of the uh, miata for so for now the miata's final mileage is 71.7 is miles of racing thank you all so much for watching i will see you guys next time have a great day